Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy and here is a roundup of all of the Overwatch 2 BlizzCon 2023 news from the opening ceremony so far. We have new heroes, not only Malga who has been announced and who is playable, yes right now, but a sneak peek into two new heroes for 2024, a new competitive game mode, a rework of an old classic map, a rework of the competitive system and much, much more. So time codes are in the description if you want to skip around, but let's get stuck in. Okay, first up, Malga is with us. The 39th Overwatch hero is indeed the colleague of Baptiste, not only from Talon, but from the story four years ago, a short story called What You Left Behind. Now, much anticipated, often speculated. It's good to see him here finally. He was leaked a little bit earlier today when Nintendo, on a news article on the Nintendo Switch Overwatch 2 page, if you turned on your Switch, actually leaked his entire kit. Honestly, in all of the years I've been covering BlizzCon and Overwatch over the last seven years or so, I think probably that's, uh, you know, a record for the least amount of time before uh, a leak came out. So well done to the Overwatch team on that one. It's an unlucky. I feel unlucky for the team. But it was still a very, very cool reveal and we have all the abilities. So let's share those with you right now. Now, it's worth saying as well that Malga is live just for this weekend. So as of me releasing this video on the Friday, November 3rd until the end of probably of Sunday, November 5th, you can play Malga in-game in any mode like quick play for example there is no limits over in the arcade so you can give Malga a go uh, good luck getting into a quick play and getting a Malga as a tank unless you're stacking as five uh, you can see the chaos in some of the gameplay footage here uh, but I haven't managed to have a play with his abilities in the range so let's get stuck in and you can give him a go now okay so Malga is a tank obviously he's got his twin chain guns as we uh, read in what you left behind when he was fighting with Baptiste going uh, after a uh, slightly uh, profiteering pharmaceutical company we have his two guns. We have Gunny number one, which kind of has incendiaries. Now, as you see here, it ignites enemies when they take enough damage. Uh, basically, having a look at the bots here, I think it's when they are below sort of, you know, 75% damage. So if you take a quarter of their health, then they set on fire and then there's extra damage ticking away there. Now, he also has a gun, uh, Char Char, the other gun. Now, it will sometimes do crits. It's a volatile cannon. Now, when I was using this, I need to test it a bit more, and I'm sure you'll find uh, all of the, the Mythbusters, the, the detail-orientated people in this, trying some more uh, with me. I couldn't see it really doing any, like, body crits anymore, but I hadn't sort of very closely compared the two. This is meant to be a more crit-centric gun, and, of course, if you want, you can fire them both together. Now, you can see his passive in action here, Berserker. So, Malga actually can gain temp health with crits, and he can gain quite a lot. If you look at his base health here, and then the amount that I crank it up to by just doing headshots with those crits, you can actually stack up quite a pool of temporary health, and you can keep that sort of going to a degree. Uh, I haven't double-checked the cooldowns, but if you keep critting, you can keep that pool of health up to a degree. It's not instantly refilling. Um, you know, there was a time where I was critting and taking damage, and it wouldn't go beyond a sort of a few away from max but quite a cool way where if you're aiming well if you're getting those crits maybe if you jump into a char char and you're critting a bit more with that gun if you're hitting headshots then Malgra is making himself harder to kill uh, the more sort of accurate and effective that he is so onto the abilities you have overrun now this is a charging ability that crowd control cannot stop um, it stomps into and through opponents uh, and then it has a jump at the end and then it has a knockback uh, at the end of that jump. Now, you can see me experimenting with it in the training range here uh, to calamitous effect. And you can also see in this rather chaotic 5-on-5 uh, five -five Malga game, although there was one Junkrat. Fair play to the Junkrat in this game. He was like, you know what? I don't care that there's a new hero out. I'm just going to play Junkrat and spam these uh, mad Samoan tanks with loads and loads of grenades. Typical Junkrat behavior. I endorse it and I'm here for it. Uh, but that said, you can see that this ability, um, you can see me actually steering this around as well. Um, I, you can steer it a little bit like a Rhine Charge when you're using it. Um, so remember that, there's a bit of left and right uh, to this sort of overrun ability. Um, and you can cancel it early. You can click to uh, shift. You can hit the shift button to cancel it early. But you don't get the jump and you don't get the stun at the end of it. So that was a little bit uh, good to know. So yeah, an interesting ability. Whack people out the way. No crowd control in the way. And yeah, if you can get the length perfect, then you can get that sort of little knockback and things at the very, very end. But yeah, cover a lot of ground in a hurry. Cardiac Overdrive here. Engage both of his hearts. And there's a story there. This aura reduces incoming damage. Uh, and you can also see that number in the middle of the screen there, showing that allies can heal themselves while they'll deal damage too. So like an inspiring aura there as well. Um, a little bit sort of Brigitte-esque, I would say. Cage Fight is the ultimate. Now you can see it traps people nearby in this like cylindrical kind of fighting ring. Um, apparently there's no damage or healing doable from the outside. Uh, so if you trap anyone in there with you, then those people are facing you in a 1v1 or 1vx, depending on how many people you've managed to trap in there. Now you can see me throwing it down here. 
um, and people being locked in place with these chains as per the trailer. And yeah, very, very interesting to pick out a few duels. Um, I think there's a character in Paladins that has something a little bit similar. Um, and I think just recently there's also a character in Valorant that has something very, very similar, ISO. Um, but obviously, you know, this, this isn't a question of copying. Some of these people are developing things at the same time. And indeed, many of these games have had things that have suspiciously or otherwise been in Overwatch 2. So yeah, only so many ideas in the world, I think. Okay, so that's Malga's kit. Now on to the rest of the news. There is a new game mode coming, Clash for PvP. So this is going to be five points in a row. The center point is the first one that teams are going to fight over on a map and teams battle back and forth, according to Aaron Keller, who announced this at the opening ceremony, to push into points or defend their own. Get all five points or reach a maximum score and that team wins. Now, I'm super actually excited that the first map for this is going to be a remake of Hanamura. So they are going to go and grab those two CP maps, which I'll be honest with you, I didn't really mind. I miss Hanamura. I miss Volskaya Industries. Controversial hot toe Overwatch takes there, I said it. Uh, but it's now going to be called Hana Oka. So looking forward to seeing the home of the Shimada clan. Um, so many lovely little details in that map. Such a beautiful map. So I'm good to see that it's going to be back uh, in this Clash format. And let's see what else comes. So looking forward to that. Now, the final two things that were announced, and of course, there is a panel tomorrow over the weekend, uh, the Overwatch Watch next panel, where there'll be a bit more on these. Number one, there's this overhaul to competitive, which we're going to hear more about. Uh, we also heard about what are probably going to be like little micro events, kind of like Quest Watch and things for next year, the Battle for Olympus and similar. So we're going to get Eldritch Horror. Now, whenever Eldritch Horror is mentioned, I always think, you know, Cthulhu, Lovecraft, that kind of vibe. So it'd be interesting to see when that comes. Egyptian mythology, well, we've had the Battle for Olympus, um, I'm sure Egyptian skins of various kinds will be super popular in a similar way to the Olympian ones. Witches, well, an obvious Halloween theme, but I'm sure they can have a lot of fun there for spooky season if Eldritch Horror is not the one. And then finally, a universe where heroes become villains and villains become heroes. Well, that could be quite fun. A little bit of a, a swap seas reverse around kind of thing. And last, but by no means least, we were teased two new heroes. Now, I may go into a lot more detail on these when we have more information on them, but we have two. One of them is called Venture, coming in Season 10. Now, bear in mind that I think we're just about to go into Season 8 uh, with Malga, so we'll see how that goes. So, you know, it's still a, a chunk of time away. And then a support codenamed at the moment Space Ranger, shown here uh, to be in Season 12. So, loving the look of those. We have a damage hero and we have a support coming as well. Two very, very cool designs there. Can't wait to see how those turn out. What do you think those heroes are going to do? What do you think their kits are going to be? Let me know in the comments below. Um, they look both uh, really, really cool and can't wait to get more details on those. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this video, throw a like, subscribe. Let me know how have you felt that BlizzCon has been. Uh, are you liking this news for Overwatch? I personally think, uh, and I'll review it by the end of the con, but I think the team have done pretty well here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, throw a like and subscribe. I'm going to be covering Overwatch, getting my lore, story, interactions, and voice lines, everything to do with Overwatch. Keep an eye out on this channel for more Malga and more Overwatch lore. Uh, a chunk of videos I want to catch up on and get done in the coming days. And of course, check the playlist here for all of my pasts. Six to seven years of Overwatch lore, story, interactions, voice lines, talking about the world of Overwatch, and so, so much more. Cheers for tuning in. I've been Hammy. Take it easy.